Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about what is it like hunting in Oregon and primarily the western side of Oregon. So western side of the Cascades to the coast. And I'm actually hiking right now to one of my spots where I left some trail cameras over the winter. And uh, I'm just going to be talking and hopefully you guys will see some useful information. I'm also checking a couple of spots for sheds. I don't know if I'm going to find any, but I just wanted to turn my camera on and share a couple of things about hunting in Oregon. So I grew up in Oregon since I was two years old. So for the last 26 years I lived here, now for the last 15 years of my life, I hunted. My dad was the one who got me into it. Let's see, is there any any sheds? No, it's probably too high in the mountains. So my dad was the one who got me into hunting. He started taking me along when I was like 10, no, less than 10, when I was like eight or seven. And uh, ever since then I was hooked. I love the mountains, I love the nature. I love being outdoors, camping and hunting. And of course fishing, fly fishing, spinner fishing. I don't do bait fishing. So I grew up here, this is my home. And I love Oregon for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that we have, we have it all. We have the coast, so we have the ocean. We have the mountains, so we have snowboarding and skiing. We have the deserts, the high deserts. And we have a lot of hunting and fishing to do out here. And uh, this is my home. This is where I grew up. I do want to move to maybe Montana or, or uh, Idaho sometime later, but probably once after I sell my business and uh, we're ready to move. Oh, there's a chipmunk. Somewhere in there. Hey, buddy. He ran away. Anyways, so this is my home. And in regards to hunting, hunting the western side, it is uh, probably somewhat different than most other states, especially the states like Montana, Idaho, because once it starts raining here in October, it's going to rain until June. It can rain until June. And... Uh, a lot of out-of-state hunters, they don't realize that. And the ones who do always come unprepared with no rain gear and stuff. So, but that's just kind of how it is. And uh, since I grew up here for me, this is uh, not much different than anything else because this is the only thing I know. You hunt in the rain you pack out in the rain, you camp in the rain, you have fun in the rain. And like they say, there's no bad weather. There's only bad, bad clothing or bad gear. So I don't mind going camping when it's raining or when it's freezing cold, because if you have a tent, you have all your sleeping bags and gear, your hoodie, I mean, rain, raincoat, rain pants, you're gonna stay dry. So recently I have purchased Sitka gear for all their high quality and uh, high quality clothes and gear. And I'm very impressed and I actually spent a couple thousand dollars, but I'm actually, I regret that I haven't done it sooner. And thanks to my wife, she was like, no, you gotta do it right now. And when I did it, I was like, shucks how come i never i never knew what it's like to have quality gear and be dry in the rain so now i enjoy hunting even more i can go for three days in the rain and i'm still good and i'm having fun but uh, in regards to in regards to hunting deer and elk blacktails they are not like mule deer 
or they're not like white-tailed deer. Black-tailed deer, they're called the ghosts of the jungles or the ghosts of the rainforests. That is because they are. You literally don't see them. You don't hear them. You can't smell them. They, they don't exist visibly, but they do exist. If you do the right things, they exist. So I still to this day have not shot a blacktail buck. I have helped my brother get one and I have helped my other couple of brothers get a few deer, but I myself have not shot a buck, a blacktail buck. I see them out of season. I see them outside my hunting areas and other units that I cannot hunt due to my tag, but I don't see them in season at range, but they can get pretty big. They can get pretty massive because because they're deer and they exist, but they're ghosts. And you literally have to play by their rules, their game, and trick them with their own tricks. Let me check my maps to make sure I'm going the right way. Okay, back at it with the black-tailed deer. I have seen, over the years, I have seen multiple really nice, solid bucks, mature bucks, four by four bucks oh, and I still haven't gotten one <clears throat> there is a lot of animals on the coast so west west of the I-5 and there is a lot of animals east of the I-5 to the ridge of the Cascade Mountains but by the way right now in Mount Hood National Forest I'm not planning to hunt here anymore I'm just grabbing my cameras So there is a lot of deer. There's more deer on the coast than there is uh, in the Cascades. That is because there's more food on the coast because it's foggy and it rains more and the elevation is lower. So let me see if there's any sheds over here. No, the elevation is lower. So the, the, the deer, they have a lot of food they have a lot of hiding spots because the whole coast is just uh, raked with ridges and canyons that are so deep and so thick and so steep that hunters cannot go through them. But for deer and elk, that is, that is their advantage. So my, my belief is that there's probably two to three times more animals on the coast than there is in the Cascades. I enjoy hunting both last season i hunted only in the cascades because i like the scenery i like the wilderness i like that you can get up higher in elevation oh look at that spot maybe there's gonna be some sheds over there it's gonna be cool to find like an elk shed or something i only found one in my life oh wow oh wow that's a cool spot yeah, I've only found a couple of sheds in my life. I think I'm a better hunter than a shed hunter because it's kind of weird. Maybe because I move so fast, I don't, 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 look, don't look at the ground a lot. Or maybe I just haven't learned the art of, uh, of shed hunting. And it's probably both. Probably because I care for the animal more than I care for the antlers on the floor. I mean, they're still cool. It's just that since I don't see them, I don't see them. Ah, oh, look, there's some tracks and there's an old, old rub from an elk. This place has a lot of elk, but I don't think I'm gonna hunt here this season, this next season, just because, just because I have my other areas that I'm trying to stick to, to gain that compound effect because the more you hunt one area, the more, ah, old elk poop and old elk tracks. Yeah, the more you stick to one area, the compound effect kicks in and it is more likely you're gonna be successful in that area than switching to a new area. It's kind of like, here's an old rub. It's kind of like 
like if you're trying to go to the gym to gain muscle and then three months into it you haven't seen any results and you're like i'm gonna become an olympic swimmer and then you start swimming and then three months into it you're like i'm gonna become a rock climber and so every three months you switch you gain the momentum that you've been trying to trying to accumulate so oh here's another hell crab this is their staging area probably in september so every time you switch to another area or to to another hobby or another another state or another wilderness that you're trying to hunt you got to relearn it and you lose the you lose the momentum that you've been trying to gain so the compound effect you have no compound effect and but the compound effect that when it, once it kicks in like imagine hunting imagine taking one wilderness and hunting hunting it for like 20 years you will know that thing you will know every animal you will know every herd of elk you're gonna know every every buck where they bed where they feed which canyon they take how come i'm not finding any sheds it's kind of stupid my total hike for today is about 15 or 16 miles just because they blocked the road and i had to come from the other side but either way back to blacktails they are the ghosts of the jungles and they they rain they win they win so much it's crazy to kill a mature buck with a bow it's pretty impossible but you got to play by their rules their game and get them with their tricks and i'm still learning that I'm watching other people who have done it before and who are doing it every year talking with them trying to learn from them Ah, there's deer tracks what is that elk deer track okay i mean this is a pretty cool spot actually maybe i might come here and hunt if i'm not gonna get anything in my in my old spot yeah a bunch of deer tracks that's pretty crazy i should set up a trail camera over here oh that's a fresh that's a fresh elk track right there i wonder where they're at it's gonna be cool to run into a herd that's an old rub demolished that tree and it killed it died oh that's okay so here we go we have an elk track a couple of elk track a couple of small deer tracks this is where they feed look at that they have so much grass it's pretty insane where are their sheds come on give me a set at least once that is gonna be so cool if I'm gonna find a shed, like a big one. Ah, even if it's small, I don't care. So that is about hunting, hunting deer. And the difference between deer and the in the west side of the I-5 and the east side of the I-5 is the deer on the west side of the I-5. That is a fresh elk track. The deer that are on the west side of the I-5 are purebred, is how they call them. They're not mixed with, with the mule deer. The deer on the east side of the I-5 that, that go all the way to the Cascade Mountains, those deer, they say they're somewhat mixed with mule deer. They call them bench leg deer. More elk tracks. That's pretty cool, actually. That is weird because I was... On the other side of that ridge, it was completely empty. There's nothing there. No deer tracks, no elk tracks. And literally, as I, as I passed over the ridge on this side, boom, I'm starting to see deer and elk tracks everywhere. Which means they don't like that side. Probably because there's the lake and there's people camping all the time. So, the, the bench-like deer, the ones that... The ones that are uh, considered that they're mixed with mule deer, uh, those deer you have to score them by the mule deer standards. Boone and Crockett, they they're not gonna let you score it by the black-tailed deer. You're, you're not gonna be in the same category. 
which is uh, interesting because they, they're just trying to stay. Dang it, I almost fell. Because they're just trying to stay as fair to everybody. Because if you truly are after a monster black tail deer, then you better go. You better go to uh, to the coast and get a solid buck over there and play the game a fair way. <clears throat> so, okay, every time I check my map, it turns off my camera. So I need to check my map again because I don't know where the trail is. Is this the trail? No, it's not. Where is it? more elk rubs maybe I will come hunt here Mount Hood forest maybe I'll take my dad up here no it's too much hiking for him oh that's nice for the elk same thing there if you want to score on a Roosevelt elk you have to go to the coast if you want to score I mean, if you're going to hunt in the Cascades, they're not going to let you score that elk by Roosevelt standards unless you killed it outside of National Forest. And then they'll let you score it. Same for deer. You have to kill it outside of National Forest because anything inside National Forest, they consider that mixed with the mule deer and mixed with the with a Rocky Mountain elk. And uh, that's, those are the rules. Because the, since they're mixed, they do get bigger antlers, but they're not gonna let you score them by those standards. Okay, I'm gonna turn my phone off because I have to check, check the map. Okay, I'm back. So, just wanna share my experience elk and deer hunting. A little bit more so I've been rifle hunting until last year and then I switched to archery so rifle hunted for 14 years and then when I switched to archery I got my bull I haven't gotten the black tail that I wanted to just because just because I'm still a beginner at archery but I did get my bull at 27 yards six by six in the cascades i thought i heard something move maybe not so i got that bull and very happy but 14 years with a rifle and i haven't gotten anything these are pretty cool plants whatever they're called and, and uh, it's just the compound effect. I didn't have anybody that taught me how to hunt. I learned everything by myself. I mean, from other people, like in YouTube and stuff and reading books. I just never went with a more knowledgeable hunter than me that could uh, tutor me in that area of my life. But my dad knew, knows a lot, but it seems like now I know more just because I've been spending more time researching, reading, practicing, scouting, calling. So, and I did get an elk. My dad still hasn't. I really wish that he's gonna get an elk this year, but we'll see. So 14 years with a rifle and no luck. I did see a couple of elk a couple of years, but that doesn't really count because I didn't shoot one. The problem is, is that, uh, okay, so there's roughly, every year there's roughly 100,000 elk hunters, rifle elk hunters in the state of Oregon, 100,000. And out of those 100,000, about 8% or 10% are successful. And for elk, well, no, and for, yeah, elk, there's about 25,000 
archery hunters in the state of Oregon. And about 8% of them are successful. The problem is, is that the rifle hunters, they have, I mean, they have their pros and cons, um, but you have to think about advantages. So for an archery hunter, the advantages are the season is four or five times longer most of the time. Rifle hunters have only four or five days. Archery hunters have a full month, 30 days. That is an advantage. Then archery hunters are hunting on the rut. When the elk are talking, when the elk are fighting, bugling. So you can communicate to them in their own language and convince them to come over. That is an advantage. The disadvantage though for archery hunters is their very limited range of 50 or 70 yards or whatever. I probably won't shoot past 50 just because I know I don't, I'm not that good. I've only been shooting a bow for like a year and a half. So, but the advantages of rifle hunters is their long range. They can shoot up to 800 yards, 600 yards, 1000 yards, whatever. So they can see an elk on the opposite side of the canyon and the, the elk can be staring at them. He's not spooked and they just uh, shoot it across, across the canyon. That is an advantage, but to each their own. And the disadvantage of, of uh, rifle hunters is that you're hunting during Thanksgiving when it's cold and when it's raining. The advantages of, of uh, archery hunters is they're hunting in September. When it's dry, when the weather's good, yeah, I can start raining in like mid September, late September, but still, it's not as cold. There isn't as much snow. So 